so hey everyone. Um, I hope you don't mind, but I have a bit of a problem I wanted to ask Max's opinion on. But feel free to listen in. Totally fine. So hey Max. Hi. I have a bit of a problem. So my team, who are amazing developers, by the way, uh, we work on an online shop. We sell Xboxes. Nice. Really cool. The other day, the team pushed to production some code, and they broke production. Don't worry, don't worry. We fixed it. People can still buy Xboxes. We reverted the changes, but it's not the first time it's happened. And I don't know what to do. They're great developers. Is your team writing end-to-end -end tests, Debbie? I mean, we, we, when we push to production, we manually test the application. I think that's what you need, end-to-end -end tests. Yeah, but you know, we're selling Xboxes. We have new features. We have so many bugs we need to fix. We do not have time to write tests or learn testing, no? Do you still believe end-to-end -end tests is like writing them for ages and it takes a long time to write them? It does take a long time to write tests, doesn't it? I can convince you with the opposite, Debbie. I Less mean, than five minutes or 10 to get started, how? write them, push them to GitHub. With what? Playwright. Have you heard of it? Is that like a theater? I work in the theater. Oh, nice. <laughs> so what is Playwright? <laughs> so what Playwright is, it's a test automation framework by Microsoft. By Microsoft, cool. How did I not know that? And it makes it really easy to write end-to-end -end tests. Should we take a look at it? Yeah, I don't believe you, because testing's hard. So let's see. In less than five to 10 minutes, we will get started using Playwright, add it to a new project. We write our first end-to-end -end test, and then we can run them. And if the time allows, we can push it even to GitHub. What? Five to 10 minutes? Five to I'm 10 minutes. I'm timing you right now. <laughs> All right. So what I have open here right now is Visual Studio Code, our favorite code editor, with the Playwright for VS Code extension installed. So what this gives us is a very easy way to get started to, with, VS, uh, with Playwright. So let's open the command palette. And there we have an install Playwright command. Let's run this. And this will ask you a couple of questions. So are you telling me I can test on Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit? Exactly. This means you can even use Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. Even on a Windows machine? Even on a Windows machine and WebKit as well. And so we have all the major platforms covered. Wow. And, and what's this GitHub Actions workflow? Thing? GitHub Actions workflow, if you would have had end-to-end -end tests with a GitHub Actions workflow, you would, be, you would have seen that you broke production way earlier. So you would have never broke production. Damn. Yeah, I need that. All right. So let's, let's click Enter. And this will generate all the files, which we see here on the left in a brief second. Cool. So this will now install browsers, NPM dependencies, and all that stuff. So what we see here is like the GitHub Actions workflow and a basic test. Let's take a look at this basic test for now. What does that test get started link do? Let me zoom in a little bit. So this get started link test, it will first go like a normal user would, go to our Playwright Dev documentation, and then go over all the links on the page. And like a link is like in the HTML world, a tag and then sees, is there one with the get started text? And then it's going to click it like a real user. That seems pretty easy to read, all right. Um, can we run the test? Definitely. So running a test in VS Code is as easy as of clicking this run icon here. I like clicking buttons. So let's see what happens. Oh, wow. The browser just popped up and clicked the button. Yes. So all the statements inside this test got executed and the browser appeared. In this case, we selected the Chromium browser, and that's what we have here right now. OK, Max, that is cool. That is cool. But that's an example test. Let, let's break it for now, maybe, and see how it goes. No, I, I, I want to like see how to write tests, because at the end of the day, okay. my developers don't know how to write tests. I don't have time to teach them. OK, we got you covered. But writing tests, you probably still think it's hard, right? Writing tests is hard. Don't you agree? Yeah? Writing tests is hard. So Playwright has Playwright Code Gen, which makes it really easy to write tests. Hang on, hang on. What's Code Gen? It's like Copilot? Code uh, Gen? Not yet, but like it makes it really easy. So you use a normal browser like a user would. You use a mouse and a keyboard. And then tests get generated. All the Playwright API calls, like clicking, filling, right-clicking, double-clicking, pressing Enter, all that stuff. 
So like what we manually do? Like what you manually do. Let's see it in action. All right, show me. So you can just press here this record new button. Let's do that. And what this will give you is like two windows. Well, what just happened in VS Code? So in VS Code, there's a new test file, the one which we generate. Wow. And the other one is the actual browser window. Can we test my app? Yes, what's the URL? Um, I think I have a, a short URL, aka.ms slash pwlab. That's going to go to my Contosus trading application. If you want to buy Xboxes, you can, you can go there. All right, so I pressed enter here. And what appeared here in VS Code is like already a page go to statement. Nice. And That's don't cool. worry, not only page.goto works. So l let's do a little bit more. So what my team broke was the process of buying the Xbox controller and putting it in the cart. OK, OK, l l let's test this. So let's go here in this input box. So while we hover over stuff here, we always calculate the best locator and the best selector for a user's needs. Let's just click here and search for Xbox. Yep. OK. Press Enter. Oh, a lot of fancy, cool controllers. Oh, the blue one is my favorite. The blue one? Yeah. Let's click on it. $95, 15% off even. I know. It's my favorite. But like, yeah, put in two or three. Two or three. Playing alone is no fun. All right, let's add it to the back. Wow, look at that. It's adding everything in VS Code just as you're clicking. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, I don't have to teach the developers anything. They just need to click buttons. This is cool. <laughs> so while we go now a little bit further in this uh, purchase process, let's go to the card. And the card is something really interesting, right? You see it here, here the page get by roll button with card, but you never see this actual word card, yeah, right? Yeah, where's card coming from? So it's actually like an accessibility label behind this icon. So oh, like an area label. Area label, exactly. Mm. Like what a screen reader would read. See, my app is good. I told you my developers were good. Yeah, they did a good job there. Thanks. So let's go here and see, hmm, maybe the right price got calculated. Let's make sure that the right price is there. OK. OK. So what a Playwright Coach and so far does not offer is like creating assertions. So okay. we are just clicking on this subtotal, which will create a click in the background. But we will change this click now to like an actual assertion. So we make sure this text, has, uh, this element has the right text. OK, so they just need to learn assertions, really. Yes. Okay, so, not too bad. So let me stop coach in here and change this to expect. Yeah, so we want the, the expect, we want to expect that that total is there. And we want to expect it to have the text. OK, yeah, that makes sense to have text. That sounds so this, easy. Uh, yeah, this sounds now like maybe like a very basic test for now, but as end-to-end -end test span, right? This would also test the back end, this would test the database and all the process, the networking, the infrastructure in between. So let's run this test maybe. Let's run it. Oh, it's waiting. Ooh, you see? My tests always fail too. Oh, it was failing actually. OK, this is, this is good. Let's leave it fail, because we broke production, right? How would we fix this? So most likely you would see in that you broke it way earlier, right? During the, your developer who broke it made the actual change. There are multiple ways to debug this. So you could either just go here inside this browser and take a look. But we created something much nicer a few months ago, which is called UI mode. OK, what does that do? So UI mode is like a graphical application where you see all the tests on the left side. We will see it in a few seconds. And then after each playwright step happened, you see how the website looked like. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I'm pretty impressed so far, but debugging is hard. So here on the left side is our test dash one spec TS, right? This is okay. the file we just generated. And here's all the code. We can run it like we did before. And it will hopefully still fail. It was still super fast, though. Yes. Here you see all the milliseconds it took. Oh, 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 slow down, slow down. What did you just do there? You made a change. So while hovering over each of the statements, you see on the right side how this, the website looked, right? We call it like a DOM snapshot what we do. So before, like five to 10 years ago, right, end-to-end -end tests were failing on your CI or locally, but you only had like a screenshot or a video. 
But now you have a whole DOM snapshot. You can. Can you do that again? You, definitely, we can go over it. <gasps> look at that. Yeah. You, you can. Can I do it? Yes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that one, one, two. Yes, and oh, you, this is cool, I love it. Yeah, and with the, with the red dot, you even see like where it was about to click before it was clicking. So let me click here and you see all the other informations which we have attached inside this, what we call the playwright trace. We have console logs, we have networking events, we have even like the source code, what you see at the bottom, right? And we see oh, before and an after snapshot. Wow. I think here it made more sense, before and after, yes. That is pretty cool. So when your test on CI is failing, you get then a zip file and you can load it locally and you would have the same experience to debug a failing test. So let's try to fix the test maybe. Yeah, let's do it. In this, in this case, it's really easy. It's just a dollar sign which is missing. So let me, we could now go back to VS Code, make the change and rerun it, but people were asking for watch mode. So let's try to watch the test. You have so watch it, mode? Yes, we have watch mode. So let's watch the test here on the left side. And let me go back to VS Code and add here a dollar symbol. And this should then automatically, when we go back to trace viewer, uh, to uh, UI mode, automatically rerun it. And now it's green. That is nice. I like that. We have three and a half minutes left. Let's try to push it to GitHub. You're not going to be able to push it to get up in three and a half minutes. Oh, Debbie, you're wrong. So, <laughs> I, I hope, I hope. So, let, let's try to be quick. So, what I prepared here is a new GitHub repository. We will quickly set the origin and in it to get boom, boom. Mm -hmm. See, pushing to get up is hard. <laughs> we will see, we will see. So you can do this because we've already installed that GitHub Actions workflow you talked about? Indeed. So what I was doing right now was initializing a GitHub repository mm -hmm. and uh, creating a Git commit, the initial commit here. Okay. And since we have the GitHub workflow already there. So uh, what do we do to set it up? It's set up by default. So if you create a new project, either via, Git, uh, either via VS Code or via our CLI, you will get a GitHub workflow. We will take a look while this GitHub uh, action is running here and can take a look here. Let me make it a bit bigger. So this will run the playwright test after each change if you make either change on the main branch or if you make a pull request. And what this will do is like, it will do a basic things like set up Node.js, check out the repository, all that stuff, install NPM dependencies. The magic piece here is just NPX playwright test. So run all the playwright tests and then upload the artifacts where the playwright trace would get uploaded, where, where you could debug failing tests. So let's see how it's going. Let me go back to Chrome and go up and see what this is doing right now. So you've just pushed the code and now it's gonna run the test. Just uh, push the code, run the test, push the code. Yeah, yeah, so it's about to install browsers right now, what you see here, and wow. uh, right now it's downloading WebKit. And now it's running the playwright test, actually. Check and it's running nine out. tests using one worker. I hope they pass. Oh, it's running nine tests because it's running it on WebKit, on Firefox. And, so far, uh, and Google and, on, and Chromium. And on Chrome. It's running it on the three browsers, my example test, and the test that we created. Yes. Very cool. I, I only tested the test on uh, Chromium. Let's see. Maybe All right. The... We, we have like one minute. You have one minute to get that up there. Yeah. So Let's if see. it's Let's failing, see. that would be like maybe the web application behaves differently on some other browser, which could totally be. If not, the GitHub team are down there. We could check with them, tell them to make GitHub faster. Let me go here. It still takes time. But that is super impressive. So no extra work needed to be able to get it up on, on, on GitHub. I could easily write tests, um, get started, I think I could get my developers to write tests. It, look, it looks fun. It's easy to debug and easy to get it on GitHub. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. Are you impressed? Well, Max, I don't know about you, but I've got a Teams meeting to go to. So. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to run. So most likely there's some uh, tasks failing in WebKit or Firefox. Sometimes so browsers behave differently. So thank we, you very much.
All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Max and Debbie.